Hi boys and girls, we are here for a reading lesson with our Wonders Storybook. For this lesson, you're going to need your Reader's Writer's Companion book. It is the orange book that was sent home with you. Please grab that book now and open up to page two. If you need time to do that, you can pause this video and then start playing again once you get your book. So after you have your book, I'm going to start reading the story. And as I read the story, I'm going to be answering the questions on the sides of the page. And you can write and underline as I write and underline. And again, if you need more time as we're going through the story, feel free to pause and then play again when you're ready. All right. So, boys and girls, the story that we're going to read today is called Room to Grow. And our essential question is, how do people from different cultures contribute to a community? Read how one family helps their community grow. I can see on the front cover, we have a family and it has a, a little caption down here that says, our new home in Portland. <clears throat> All right, so before I, I like to get started and read these stories, I like to click on this little button here and listen to the summary. So let's do that. We're gonna listen to it first in English and then we'll read it in Spanish. So let's listen to that to help us get an idea of what the story is gonna be about. Room to Grow. This story is narrative nonfiction. Kiku and her family grow beautiful plants in their small apartment. Kiku, her parents, and her friends work all summer and grow many vegetables in a community garden. At the end of the summer, they have a cookout to celebrate the garden. Kiku is very proud of her family and her culture. All right. So the I can tell from the summary that we're going to be reading about a character named Kiku and her family. Let's listen to it in Spanish. Espacio para crecer. Este es un relato sin ficción. Kiku y su familia cultivan bellas plantas en su pequeño apartamento. Kiku, sus padres y sus amiguitos trabajan duro todo el verano cultivando muchos vegetales en un jardín comunitario. Al final del verano, organizan una barbacoa para celebrar el jardín. Kiku se siente muy orgullosa de su familia y su cultura. All right, now that we've listened to our summary, let's get started. Over here on the second page, page three, is where our story starts, and we see that it starts with this bigger uh, these bigger letters at the top. And this is called your heading. Your heading tells you a short phrase about what the following paragraphs are going to be about. On this page, I can see that there are three paragraphs. I know when a paragraph starts because there's this big space before the sentence starts. This space is bigger than the spaces in between words. Uh, this large space that starts a paragraph we call this an indent. Um, and then as the sentence continues, it starts at the beginning of where the line would be on the page and keeps going. Uh, and then you can see here a new paragraph starts and then it keeps, the sentences keep continue, continuing. There's usually like a extra space in between here. They drop down and I see here's another space. So I'm going to number my paragraphs really quick um, because we're going to be writing in our companion books and this is going to help me answer the questions when we get to them on the side. One. Two. Sorry, I'm trying to use my mouse. Kind of hard to do. And three. There we go. So I have my three paragraphs. Okay, let's get started. Good readers read everything on the page, so let's start with the heading. Spring in the City. My name is Kiko Sato. 
Last spring, my family and I moved from the country to the big city. Our new home in Portland had no yard. There wasn't even a tiny plot of land, so Mama made an indoor garden. First, she and Papa planted seed in, seeds in pots. They hung them from hooks. Next, they crammed plants onto shelves. Green vines tumbled over desks. Soon, our house had plants everywhere. At first, I was scared to start school. I was afraid no one would be my friend. But I soon met a classmate. Jill Hernandez and I were practicing reading aloud one day. She helped me say her last name, and I helped her pronounce mine. The next day, we were best friends. Jill spent lots of time at my house. Then down here, we have a text feature, and this is a map, and it said the title of the map is up top. It says, A Map of Oregon. Oregon is a state in the United States. And down here we have a little map key. And above that we have a compass rose. All right, so let's get to our questions on the side. Whenever we're doing our questions here, the before it asks the questions, it gives us some clues about what we're going to be focusing on in the question. So you'll usually see in really small print which paragraph we need to search for the answer in. So for this question, we're going to search in paragraph two. Now, good thing we went back and numbered our paragraphs, uh, and I hope you did too. If you didn't, you can quickly write those in in the indents in the beginning of each paragraph. So paragraph two is where we're going to focus on to find this answer. And the type of question is, it says, ask and answer questions. Okay. Why do mama and papa grow an indoor garden? Okay. So we're asking, why do they grow an indoor garden? It's telling us that we need to circle text evidence to answer. So we're going to go into our second paragraph here, and we're going to find the text evidence to answer this question. Okay. To do that, I'm going to do some rereading. Our new home in Portland had no yard. There wasn't even a tiny plot of land, so Mama made an indoor garden. Aha! And we're going to circle why they had an indoor garden. And the reason why is our new home in Portland had no yard at all. So go ahead and circle that with me. There you go. If they had a yard, they would have just planted outside, but they didn't have any yard. Okay, moving on to the next question. And here I can see we're going to find that the answer to this next question in paragraph three. So it's gonna be down here somewhere. And the question's gonna focus on sequence. And sequence, when we're reading, sequence is about the order of events in the story. So what happened first, next, uh, and last, so forth. So it's telling us that we're gonna need to underline. I like how they put this in bold. These letters are dark, that's called bold. That's gonna help me focus on what I have to do. So I have to underline what happens after Kiku meets Jill. So I remember when I was reading that, that they had met somewhere down here and it was saying how they were doing a read aloud so they were doing a read aloud and then it says she helped me say her last name and i helped her pronounce mine so that is what they did after they met because when they first met they were reading together practicing reading and then after they met the very next thing they did were was they were helping each other say their names so let's underline that this is a two-part question because it's saying, uh, it's telling us to underline and then it's asking us what did they do the next day? Um, what happens the next day? So what happened after was they pronounced their names and then it says 
the next day, oh, that's what we're looking for, it's a right there question. The next day, we were best friends. Oh, so that must be our answer. So let's go in here, we're gonna type this in. All right, they were best friends. And you can go ahead and write that in on those lines. Okay, need more time, you can pause it to finish writing. If not, we're going to move on. All right, boys and girls, now that we're on our next page, I see that there's another header here. I also see there's indents. So remember those indents mean that there are uh, multiple paragraphs, more than one paragraph. So I'm gonna go in here with my pen before I even get started writing and I'm gonna number my paragraphs. So here's our heading and I see a big indent. So this is gonna be the first paragraph. Okay, I see a second indent here. So I'm gonna draw my two the best I can with my computer here. Uh, and then I don't see another heading over here. So this, this, uh, these paragraphs, these paragraphs are part of this heading here. So the, the, whatever this idea is, it's continuing on to this page. So I'm going to keep labeling, numbering, I should say. So this is going to be paragraph three. Oh, here's another one. This is paragraph four. And down here we have paragraph five. Even though it's small, it's still a paragraph. It's indented and it uh, stops there. And believe it or not, this is paragraph six. Whoop, not the best looking six, but you get the point. So I see the heading here says an idea for a garden. So somebody must be getting some ideas. Let's read on and find out. One afternoon, Jill and her mother came to visit. One afternoon, Jill and her mother came to visit Mama and Papa and me. First, they saw our beautiful potted plants. Jill's mother said, Jill admires your indoor garden. She has told me so much about it. We all sat down while Mama served tea. First, she put green tea into the tea bowl. Then she added hot water and stirred. She handed the bowl to Jill's mother and bowed. Okay, we're ready to answer the questions along the side. Like I said just before, this little print, this small print here tells us where we're going to look for our answer. And it says in paragraph one. So here's our paragraph. And then it says we're going to, it, the question's going to be about headings. Oh, we just talked about that. Okay. So the question is, draw a box around the heading. How does Jill feel about Mama and Papa's indoor garden? So there's, it's telling us to do two things here. So let's take it the uh, one sentence at a time. The first part is says, draw a box around the heading. All right, remember, this is the heading up here. Is like the it's like a mini title for the paragraph okay so now that that's done let's move on to the rest of the question how does Jill feel about mama and papa's indoor garden all right so I remember this sentence as I was reading it because it's one of our vocabulary words I can tell because it's it's highlighted here and all our vocabulary words are highlighted throughout this story. Um, and it's asking about how does Jill feel? And this little sentence here, it says, Jill admires your indoor garden. So that's what we have to put in here. That's how she feels. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna type that in and you can write it in. Jill admires the indoor garden. So admires means that she appreciates it, she likes it. Then it says, right after that, it says circle text evidence, and that is our evidence. If you're going to say that's the answer and you're 
to find it within the story. You have to have your evidence. And we're going to circle our text evidence. Want to kind of do a crazy little circle there. There you go, just to get the whole sentence since it drops into the next line. Now that we did that, let's move on to the next question. This one's going to be in paragraph two, so down here. What does mama do before she adds hot water to the tea bowl? Now look, this is questions about sequencing. So we're talking about the order of events. So this one's saying, what did she do before she adds hot water? So let's go back in here and let's kind of look for where she put the hot water. It says, then she added hot water and stirred. So we're gonna go before that. Let's check it out. Let's start from here. We all sat down while mama served tea. First, she puts green tea into the tea bowl. So what did she do? Well, she put green tea into the tea bowl. So it says that we have to underline our text evidence. Let's do that. I'm going to switch my pen color. First, she puts green tea in the tea bowl. All right. Then it says, write two signal words here. Now, signal words, when you were talking about sequence of events, is what's telling us when they're happening, the words that are telling us the order in which they're happening. So when we go back into this par paragraph, I see the word first and the word then. So um, those are what we're going to type here. If in there are some other occasions where you might see when we're talking about signal words for sequence of events, like uh, next, last, finally. But for this example, we're just using the words, the words first and then. All right, boys and girls, that is our lesson for today. We're going to pause right in the middle of the story and pick it up again tomorrow on page five. So boys and girls, make sure that you don't lose this page. You can uh, put a bookmark in here so you don't lose it and pick this back up tomorrow with us. All right, boys and girls, bye for now.